everyone, welcome back to the next one from the previous one talking about snap on virus or in general getting into oscilloscopes. Uh, kind of like really want to talk about maybe that not so much again for the oscilloscope, kind of like what you can do with the oscilloscope, like the basic. Obviously, you got the channels, what you're going to be connecting to the channels to do, you know, whatever jobs you're going to be doing. Starting off, I would say, kind of like. You know the basic setup whatever scope you're going to be getting it will come with some leads ideally you know i don't want to say like for 100 percent for sure i mean if it's second hand you know you gotta have to look out for them if it does come because some people there you know they keep them but you know it's a different story so yeah got snap on various this one that i bought did come with you know being a four channel it did come with uh with the leads so obviously you got your i mean you know, blue, red, and green, and then I got the yellow one over here. Over here, as you can see. Nice thing about the two, uh, two of the you know wires that are on the Snap-on Verus. I don't know about the other ones. Maybe uh, with the Vantage Pro, and then obviously the Triton and the newer ones. Obviously the Zeus. Uh, it you know two. The, I think the yellow one and the green one is kind of like ground and you know the signal the channel one together so you've got two grounds over here and then obviously your channel one kind of like connects into one wire and then coming out from the other side is again splits into uh, your black one which is going to be your ground and then your yellow one which is obviously where you're going to connect it to whatever sensor you know back probably to like a signal wire or whatever you know whatever diagnostics you're going to be doing you know nice feature about this um, so yeah you're going to have your basic leads uh, where you're going to be connecting them what can you connect on them uh, starting off is going to be the main kind of like standard probes I would say uh, well, I'll just put this one to the side for now uh, so yeah you're going to have your standard probes I mean you know this kind of like a little organization tray, not really the best one, but anyway. Uh, yeah, you got your standard, obviously there are banana, you know, banana leads. So you're gonna need like banana kind of like accessories. Uh, you know, you got your standard different type of like probes, as you can see over here, kind of like uh, pointy ones. Uh, you wanna be careful because you know, they, you, know, you can stab yourself if you're not careful. Uh, obviously, it doesn't matter the color really and truly, you know, they go in there, but not over here, this side. So you can use your standard leads, you know, nothing too fancy about that one. You got other kind of like back probing ones, these little thin ones. I like these ones, uh, especially if you're going to be back probing sensors, like let's say, you know, you, you doing, you're working on a crank sensor and then you're back probing the signal wire onto the crank sensor. Obviously, once you identify the signal wire, uh, but yeah, back probing it, you know, so it's kind of like you know the connect uh, the the sensor is still connected, and then you can get information on your scope, see kind of like voltage status, see anything changing. These I would recommend nice ones. Uh, I mean, these are kind of like you know hard. I mean, there's kind of like flexi ones is these ones. So I don't know if you can see that. So they are like flexi. Uh, yeah, you know, I got a couple of each. Uh, so you know, it does. Yeah, I mean, the needle, needle nose uh, back probing, uh, well probes. So you know, you get what I'm saying. Uh, so I would probably you're gonna be using these a lot. Say similar with T pins, uh, but I'll get into T pins in a sec. Uh, these um, kind of like hook. I don't know what you call these exactly. Um, but it's kind of like a spring-loaded hook setup, back probe, uh, not back probe, um, hook probes. I think that's what you call them. Not 100% sure. Uh, obviously, I've got a black, a black one over here, and then the red one. So yeah, but essentially, it's a spring-loaded hook. So you can be one way, or you can pull it, or the other way. And then I don't know if you can see that over there. You know, if I press it, it kind of like comes back, and then you know if. For whatever reason, because nowadays getting into the simplest wiring of the cars, you got a lot of access, technically. Uh, you know, if you can't get to the sensor, but you can get to the wire going to the sensor, you can actually, you know, hook probe it from this one, and then, you know, get 
you know the information you need the measurements and all that ideally you want to use some liquid tape after that kind of like cover up the wire because obviously you're pinching through uh the kind of like the um, insulation that's the one you basically kind of like ruining the insulation of the wire to like obviously uh you know get a uh, connect on there so a bit of liquid tape just to cover it up because you know if that one touches on to anything it can short to ground and then depending where that wire goes if it goes to the ecu or whatever yeah you can potentially cook something so you don't want to do that so if you're going to use this cover up you know fix up the the wire after that uh the insulation use some liquid tape or whatever you want to use tape does the job liquid tape is a bit more you know proper job i would say so yeah going from there obviously you're gonna have your crocodile clips uh you know i mean i've got some small ones over here and then kind of like big ones you know these ones ideally i mean i got some over here the other day these ones i would say especially you know you need i mean like i make on my previous video you saw on my uh fluke one i got a crocodile clip onto the ground you know the ground you want to find a good ground put it on there test that you get good readings so you know that your ground is good and then go test what you're going to be testing without removing the ground so you know basically the same when they say like oh test your meter it's essentially not testing the meter that gives you readings but kind of like test your meter that the ground that you're using is a good solid ground and then whatever measurement you're going to be testing is an accurate measurement rather than seeing the numbers going up and down and then you're second guessing whether are you getting a true measurement or you don't know what the hell is going on so you know ground any ground wire uh, that you you know you're going to be grounding on on your scope your meter whatever crocodile clips you know big or small personal preference again i don't get to judge you do you but yeah you know you use them and then it's kind of like your hands free to you know you know probe the other stuff you're going to be probing so you know get good crocodile clips you know big or small again down to you similar as to like again banana clips so they will go simple as that clip on there and then you're good to go now getting into the more expensive stuff uh which is going to be apart from the little you know adjustment clips and all of that is gonna be kind of like well people call them different names i mean they call them current clamps amp clamps pretty much the same thing um but yeah i call them whatever amp clamps current clamps same thing uh it's gonna be your amp clamps amp clamps now you kind of like separate into two sections uh kind of like low low um low current and then the high current obviously you can see the difference from the clamps this one is a bit more kind of like of a mouthful this one obviously being a little bit smaller what can you use the amp clamps with uh you can do a lot of things with them i'm, I'm i mean i'm just showing you now what you can use on an oscilloscope uh you know i'm i'm not gonna get into really much of a detail that you know i mean with amp clamps you know you can do a compression test if you if you want to you can check whether you get in power to like let's say for instance your fuel pump yeah you can do so many things without them but the thing is they measure current these ones are the bnc connector unfortunately uh, the ones from pico that i wanted to get with the banana clips uh banana connectors they didn't make them anymore they stopped making them for whatever reason you know bad luck i would say uh is what it is you can get them in bnc and then you can kind of like get a bnc adapter uh as you can see over here i got a bnc female adapter so see that up close so that's your that's your male bnc and then that's your kind of like female bnc you know uh, you know it's just simple setup kind of like put it in and then twist it you know is it you know a huge problem i mean i wanted them with the banana connectors they didn't come i got a bnc adapter you know and then i got some spare leads banana leads so i ain't got much of a problem just you know i had to invest a little bit more in adapters i did make the mistake though of uh forgetting that i need to get a female bnc adapter and then i got like one from uh pico 
but this one is a male one so it's kind of like crap but anyway well it's not crap but it's just not the one that I needed I mean I'm not gonna send it back I might need it in the future you never know um, but yeah Amp clamps are kind of like another tool you're going to be using with scopes with depending on what you want to you want to measure a thing to look out for is obviously their polarity they do have like an arrow uh, which one is easier to show I don't know if you can see that through there so there is kind of like you can see the arrow on there positive going like left uh, so you know whatever you're going to be clamping uh, you want to kind of like the conventional theory that positive goes from positive to negative you want to clamp it that way so you know the wire whichever way it's going some scopes I don't know if all scopes do that they go like an inverter switch so even if you do end up you know putting it the wrong way you can you know they got the inverted um, feature and then you know it swaps it around for you so you can actually see uh, you know the measurement the way it should be uh, kind of like instead of upside down you know, not really kind of like a you know big problem, but it can kind of like put you off if you're not aware of it. Uh, another tool you can use, uh, which I don't have because it's a bit pricey. Uh, but you know, tools like these are pricey. Electronics are gonna be pricey if you want the good stuff. Uh, is gonna be pressure transducers. So whatever connection you're gonna put it on, let's say you want to measure your fuel pressure, you connect it to your fuel pressure rail. Uh, and then you know, obviously you start the crowd or crank it or whatever to see the fuel pressure it basically uh, transforms the pressure inside you know from the fuel rail or whatever let's say compression test that you're doing or whatever it transforms that into voltage so you can see obviously through your um, scope you can see like the the voltage well it depends on what scales you put it on I mean there are scales that are going to be for amps uh, you know on the various like I showed you before I mean I'll show you again just over here you know it's essentially the same thing kind of like the scales are different it's still volts it's just uh, oops uh, it's just um, the the scales are different it's still like volts because if you look at it on there it says I don't know if you can see the settings so let's say you got 20 amps, it's 100 millivolts per amp. So if I go lap scope, and then if I go volts DC, the scales are gonna be volts, and then it's gonna be obviously your time frame. If I go amps, it's basically gonna change the, um, the volts into amps, so my amp scales will be over there. It's still technically volts, but it's just been uh, converted into amps. So if you wanna like look at it as amps, it doesn't mean like it's you know checking amps necessarily. So yeah, but yeah, pretty much that was kind of like part two uh, of you know what you can do with your scope. Kind of like different different tools you can use on there. I'm sure you can use other tools as well. So many tools, adapters, you know, different stuff that you can come up with. Uh, pretty much that was the video, guys. Uh, as for the continuation of these kind of like videos about the scope, uh, I will be trying to get like um, my car kind of like, uh, I'll be sitting in my car kind of like get like a more of a, like a project. Uh, so I got something to like uh, work on and then show you different examples and stuff. Uh, but that's going to take a little bit of a while, so maybe end of the month, next month or something. It's going to take a little bit of a while just to get the setup done because uh, going through some changes now uh, but yeah pretty much that was the video guys leave a comment down below tell me know what you think tell me the experience you have with using well not necessarily the snap on various scope any scope really and truly uh, but yeah that was the video guys I'll see ya in the next video peace